Mike has a 1947 CJ2A Jeep and he's going through some modifications to the axles. He writes, I have your book, the Jeep CJ Rebuilder's Manual, and I found it very useful while working on my 1947 CJ2A. My CJ has the original D41 rear and D25 front. Actually, these are Spicer axles and it would be a 41-2 and the 25 in the front. And long ago, I bought and installed the worn full floating rear and front hubs. Read about the worn disc brake bracket as used in your CJ5 project. I called Warren, they were very helpful, but told me it was a long discontinued part. What I am looking for is a set of brackets. Failing that, I'd like to get a dimensional drawing. Mike, the brackets that you talk about, as seen in my Jeep Rebuilder's Manual for the 1946-71 CJs, those brackets from Warren accept a GM S-Truck caliper. They're no longer available. That system worked beautifully on the 1955 CJ5. And for those who are interested, a copy of my book would illustrate that installation for both the front and rear. And they were worn full floating front and worn full floating rear. You've made the conversion at the rear already and that eliminated the tapered axle shafts. By going to full floating at the rear, you eliminated the factory 10 spline tapered axle shafts and hubs and that's a big plus. What you're looking for at this point are brackets to hang the calipers, but those calipers have to be centered over the correct rotors. And in the process, you'll need to be certain what the flange pattern is from the worn hubs and match up rotors, calipers, and brackets. The beauty of Dana Spicer axles is that the flange pattern for the steering spindles and the rear axle flange pattern for the brake backing plate are identical. So if you find brackets, they will fit front and rear as long as there's clearance and so forth. One method that people apply here is to use the common 1978 up CJ Jeep front brackets which align the caliper with the correct rotor. You'd have to again see if the worn spindles at the front place the front hubs, those worn hubs, in a position so that the correct rotor matched with the correct caliper will actually be positioned properly by those brackets. But that is one way to go, and that's to use factory Jeep pieces. Typically, disc brakes at the front, you might consider drum brakes at the rear. You already have 11-inch brakes, and they're more than adequate when matched up with disc brakes at the front. The disc brakes at the front and drum at the rear is a common layout for 1978 up CJ models. And you can use that as a baseline, if you will, or a template. The Jeep models up through 1986 have a five on five and a half inch bolt circle, which you need for your wheels as well. Again, the issue here is making sure that you have brackets that attach properly to the steering knuckles and the rear axle flange that will center the correct caliper over the correct rotor on those worn spindles and spindle flanges. Assuming that you work your way through those parts, whether you use stock replacement parts or find an aftermarket source for brackets that work with a specific caliper and so on, and there may be aftermarket manufacturers who can accommodate that, you also need to upgrade the hydraulic system. The original single master cylinder will not work with disc brakes front, drum rear, or four-wheel disc brakes, whichever choice you follow through with. In that sense, you would not get enough fluid displacement from the original single master cylinder, and there's a safety factor, of course, of not having a dual master cylinder in the event of a failure of the brake system at one end or the other of the vehicle. You'll need a master cylinder that matches either disc front and drum rear, if that's your choice, or four-wheel discs. And I'm emphasizing that because the Jeep master cylinders for disc front, drum rear, which are optimal if that's your brake arrangement, have a check valve for the rear brake system to keep the wheel cylinders from bleeding down, but do not use a check valve in the master cylinder for the disc brakes at the front. So that master cylinder is specifically for disc front, drum rear. If you go to four wheel disc brakes, then you eliminate the check valve for the rear brake system. Regardless, you need to make sure that the master cylinder that you choose is designed for either a four wheel drum, disc front, drum rear, or four-wheel disc system depending upon what you end up with in your layout. I trust that this is helpful. You have a lot of options with a Dana axle. There are aftermarket and OEM parts. If you scour a wrecking yard, you're likely to find the things that will fit. 
in the day when people converted to an 11 inch by 2 inch drum brake system at all four wheels to eliminate the 9 inch brake issue of CJs like yours. They would use a backing plate from Lincoln cars, vintage Lincolns, that also had a 5 on 5 and a half inch brake drum and they would machine out the inside of the brake drum face so that it would clear the hub flange. As a footnote, you might also consider upgrading the brake pipe, which is old in any case, to a larger ID pipe that is suited and matches a disc brake front, drum brake rear system, or whatever layout you end up with. I'd like to emphasize that you may need a proportioning valve. Proportioning valves are used with disc front, drum rear brake systems, and even with some late model four-wheel drum brake systems. You have the option of getting a manual proportioning valve as I describe in the Jeep CJ Rebuilders manuals, both of the manuals I talk about the adjustable rear proportioning valve. Or you can use OEM hardware and a lot of people go to the 1978 up proportioning valves for a stock Jeep system. In that case you're using the master cylinder and combination valve or proportioning valve with the disc front drum rear brakes. The closer you come to emulating an OEM braking system, the better engineered your Jeep brakes will be.